Welcome to High School AP Biology, the Immune System Cram Course. Today, I am going to talk about the inflammatory response. If you have not done so already, um, we have a mobile app designated for this course and it's called AP Biology, the Immune System Study App. In this uh, mobile application, we have lectures, flashcards, and quizzes. The course is completely free, so you can download the app whenever you want, free of charge, and it is available on both um, iPhone and Android. So, first of all, when is inflammatory response going to occur? Well, your immune system would usually produce a inflammatory response when tissues are injured either by bacteria, trauma, toxins, or heat. So in result, um, what happens is the damaged cells uh, release chemicals and includes um, bradykinin, histamine, and prostaglandins. The chemical release of these damaged cells would cause blood vessels to leak fluid into the damaged tissues, which results in a condition we know as swelling. So the swelling mechanism helps isolate the foreign substance from further contact with the body tissues and um, the chemical release of the damaged t tissues in turn attracts um, phagocytes which we would talk about in another lecture. So in, in, in summary of the entire process of the inflammatory response is that when tissues are injured under certain conditions cells that become infected uh, uh, in the tissue uh, with bacteria um, the cells within it uh, would release chemicals in which it creates an alarm signal and what the response is is that blood vessels in that tissue will dilate lead, leading to blood flow increase and in which it produces a swelling effect to prevent foreign, um, foreign substances to further damage tissues and the chemical releases by these cells would attract phagocytes which would trigger something called an immune response. So with the chemical release it also causes the neutrophils and the macrophages to arrive and kill off these bacteria. Um, and then because of the macrophages, um, they, when they arrive, they also release something called the interleukin-1, which is uh, in turn would cause the hypothalamus to respond by raising up the body temperature. And uh, this is usually, usually leading to fever. So the fever in itself uh, stimulates a process known as phagocytosis, which we will explain in another lecture. Um, however, uh, it should also be known that um, prolonged or extreme temperature of the fever involved um, is also a harm in itself which includes um, denaturing of enzymes which may or may not cause 
permanent damage to one's body. This concludes our lecture. Thank you for your listening. Remember, like us or subscribe to our channel for more updates on our lecture materials. Also, download our free app for your iPhone or Android if you have not already done so for flashcards and quizzes that are related to this lecture. Also check out our website um, as shown in our video description on YouTube for apps and lectures for other units. Thank you. Bye-bye.